A digital security risk is an event or action that causes loss of or damage to a computer system. There are several types of security risk including software theft, hardware theft, unauthorized access and use, internet and network attacks by computer viruses, worms, and Trojan horses, system failure, and information theft. Some of these breaches to computer security are accidental, others are planned. Although computer crime seldom involves violence, it is far from a victimless crime. Every year, computer crime costs U.S. businesses and citizens billions of dollars. Cybercrime refers to online or internet-based illegal acts. Today, cybercrime is one of the Federal Bureau of Investigation's top three priorities. Traders of cybercrime typically fall into one of the basic categories shown on this screen, hacker, cracker, script kitty, corporate spies, unethical employees, cyber extortionist, and cyber terrorist. Information transmitted over networks has a higher degree of security risk than information kept on an organization's premises. Computer viruses, worms, Trojan horses, and others are classified as malware, short for malicious software. Samples of internet and network attacks include a botnet, denial of service attack, backdoor, and spoofing. A firewall is hardware and or software that protects a network's resources from intrusion by users on another network, such as the internet. All networked and online computer users should use a firewall. Some operating systems include personal firewalls. A personal firewall protects personal computers and data from unauthorized intrusions. The firewall monitors transmission to and from the computer and informs the user of an attempted intrusion. One way to prevent unauthorized access and use by employees is with a written acceptable use policy. When it is documented and explained to employees, an acceptable use policy provides justification for terminating the employment of any individuals caught using computers in an unauthorized manner. An acceptable use policy should also specify the acceptable use of computers by employees for personal reasons. Network systems require that users correctly enter a username and a password before they can access the network. There are many ways to make your password more secure, including a longer password. Longer passwords provide greater security. Some websites use CAPTCHA which displays a series of distorted characters and requires the user to enter the characters correctly to continue using the website. This is one way to verify that the user input is not computer generated. Other ways to control computer access is through the use of a possessed object or a biometric device. Examples of biometric devices include fingerprint readers, face recognition systems, hand geometry systems, voice verification systems, signature verification systems, and iris recognition systems, and retinal scanners. Digital forensics involves the examination of computer media, programs, data and log files on computers, servers, and networks and is used to analyze evidence found on computers and networks. Many areas use digital forensics. In fact, John A. Logan College has a digital forensics degree program. Software theft is the act of stealing or illegally copying software or intentionally erasing programs. Software piracy is illegal duplication of copyrighted software. Product activation is one technique used by software producers to try to decrease software theft. Product activation allows the user to input a product identification number online or by phone in order to receive a unique installation identification number. A license agreement gives a user the right to use the software. The user does not own the software but only has the right to use the software under specific conditions. A single user license agreement usually allows the user to install the software on one computer, make a backup copy, 
and then sell the software after removing it from the computer. Information theft occurs when someone steals personal or confidential information. Encryption safeguards against information theft. Encryption is the process of converting plain text, readable data, into cipher text, unreadable characters. Digital signatures are often used to ensure that an imposter is not participating in an internet transaction. A digital signature is an encrypted code that a person, website, or organization attaches to an electronic message. A digital certificate is a notice that guarantees a website is legitimate. A secure site is a website that uses encryption to secure data. Web addresses of secure sites often begin with HTTPS instead of HTTP. Browsers also often display a lock symbol in the window. Hardware theft is the act of stealing digital equipment. Hardware vandalism is the act of defacing or destroying digital equipment. To help reduce the of chances of theft, companies and schools use a variety of security measures. To prevent against data loss caused by system failure or hardware or software theft, computer users should back up files regularly. A backup is a duplicate of a file, program, or disk that can be used if the original is lost, damaged, or destroyed. Cloud storage provides off-site backups. Wireless networks pose additional security risks. Intruders connect to wireless networks to gain free internet access or to access an organization's or individual's confidential data. Computers can be used for both good and bad intentions. Computer ethics are the moral guidelines that govern the use of computers and information systems. Remember, not all information on the web is correct. Information Technology Code of Conduct focuses on acceptable use of technology. Employers and schools often specify standards for the ethical use of technology in a code of conduct. Clean computing refers to reducing electricity and environmental waste while using computers. People use, and often waste, resources such as electricity and paper while using a computer. Listed on this screen are several green computing suggestions. Information privacy refers to the right of individuals and companies to deny or restrict the collection and use of information about them. Huge databases store data online. Much of the data is personal and confidential and should be accessible only to authorized users. It is important to safeguard all of your information. Key is a small text file that a web server stores on your computer. When you visit a website, the browser searches your hard disk for a cookie associated with the website. If the browser finds a cookie, it sends the information from the cookie file to the website. For example, online shopping sites use cookies for keeping track of items in a user's shopping cart. Unfortunately, however, some websites sell or trade information stored in your cookies. Web browsers allow users to set the browser to accept cookies, prompt the user to accept cookies, or disable cookies. Phishing involves an official looking email message that attempts to obtain your personal and financial information. Clickjacking occurs when an object that can be clicked on in a website contains a malicious program. Spyware is a program placed on a computer or mobile device without the user's knowledge that secretly collects information about the user and then communicates the information it collects to some outside source while the user is online. Adware is a program that displays an online advertisement in a banner or pop-up window on web pages, email messages, or other internet services. Digital engineering is defined as gaining unauthorized access to or obtaining confidential information by taking advantage of the trusting human nature of some victims and the naivety of others. ...about privacy has led to the enactment of federal and state laws regarding the storage and disclosure of personal data. 
Page 233 in your textbook provides a listing of the major U.S. government laws concerning privacy. Employee monitoring involves the use of computers, mobile devices, or cameras to observe, record, and review an employee's use of a technology, including communications such as email messages, keyboard activity, used to measure productivity, and websites visited. Many programs exist that easily allow employers to legally monitor employees. Businesses use content filtering. Content filtering is the process of restricting access to certain material on the web. Web filtering software also restricts access to specified websites.